Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the Zen bell so you know when we're going live. And of course, of course, if you like the content, please give us the thumbs up, particularly if you're watching the recorded video over the weekend. So this is Friday, right? April 29th. Let's welcome everybody who's coming on to the stream. All right. Happy Friday. Nexo is up. All right. We'll take a look at that. Flip Burgers definitely wants the Zen Bell. Taz first on the stream. Drew X, right? You're welcome, sir. Fernando, Silent Sandal, Rose Conwell, welcome, right? Sheldon from the Caribbean, South Africa's here, right? Ricardo, thank you. Mexico, right? <laughs> Hoff said, you know, Bill, how many red shirts do you have? Well, I, I have four notorious red shirts, two other red shirts, and I have four more notorious shirts that are red with different logos. So I got enough for a bear market. And of course I'm wearing the red hat. So I told you people who do bear markets are big meanies. I don't want to be a big meetings. I'm just letting the clothing do the talking. Okay. We have people coming from all over the world here, California. Okay. The most expensive state on a planet. Someone said, dude, buy this guy a green shirt. Glad you like the hat. Everybody is here. San Antonio Shoemakers for the win. Yes. India up late at night. Welcome. Okay. Now let us jump in to your market update, especially because Jersey just joined. Now we have gone over the five stages of the bear market. Yesterday was, we're all going to make it. <clears throat> now, I was very polite about it, but I said, if we're all going to make it, doesn't work. If we're all going to make it, doesn't work. Then this thing could get massively wrecked. Massively. As a matter of fact, with, you know, crypto options expiration today, this makes it feel more and more like 2008. Because I remember way back when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, nobody knew what it meant. There was an options expiration. And then you woke up Monday and you were like, oh my God. Now I hope that's not the case here, but it could be. So let's get ready. We're going to look at some very big picture traditional charts. And I have a enhanced version of altcoin overtime. We have a new feature on the token metric site where you can see the price of small coins versus the token metrics AI grade. People, you're going to love it. Don't go anywhere because now we're going to mix our spreadsheet, right? Where we look for coins that are moving right and then we're going to look them up on token metrics very cool stuff you're going to like it okay now let's take a look at this bear market anatomy part one be aware of the failed rally we had two failed rallies to start this move two don't feed the bear. That means when you have these things where the market's down 2% and it winds up up 3% and 
and it looks like the most unbelievable reversal candle, sell. Like you are one of those big mean people. Then there's the fear of being short. So don't feed the bear. Everyone feeds the bear. Shorts cover. The market collapses. Everyone goes, oh, I can't be short down here. I just know it. Not doing it. Not doing it. Okay? Because I got hosed last time. And then the market does like a, a bounce. And we go, maybe it's over. We're all going to make it. And then the dragon comes out. Okay. Now, hopefully today is not the start of the dragon coming out. However, I suspect it is. And it's time to get real about risk management like right now. All right. Let's start with ApeCoin, the one coin market. This chart has two principal lessons. One, there is such a thing as a one coin market. People are running out of small altcoins, and I think they're running out of Bitcoin and Ethereum to chase this at like a trading level. So this was the only game in town, and I think people think that they're safe in this and in GMT, okay? And they might be. So they're all chasing what's up. Ape broke out of a triangle, and in a rare instance, right? Came back down and touched the apex of that triangle to like the number and went straight up. So this could be in a chart book. I have 26, like the next best resistance I could come up with in ape is 26. So if ape is above 26, then all the money in the crypto markets flowing into ape. If not, then this was like some sort of wild speculative FOMO combined with people trying to find a place to be safe. People as in possibly hedge funds, right? So that's, that could be what drove the FOMO in ape. Now, some charts that no one wants to talk about, but we need to. Dollar index, long-term chart, each candle's three month. Very simple, there's a teacup and handle. Anyone who's watched this stream for any period of time, has seen me use teacup and handle to find bottom after bottom. Teacup is pretty standard, right? The handle can be difficult, but once the move gets started, it's a freight train. Now in dollar index, you know, it's not that big of a deal because it's slow moving. And crypto is a fast moving world. But what you'll notice is first dollar index was at 100. Now it's at 103. It just sits there. And it's probably going to 108. And long-term, it's probably going to 142. Why? Because the biggest currencies in the world are crashing. Why are they crashing? Well, they can't fight inflation. Let's do it that way. They can't fight inflation. The central banks have got serious problems. So this is the euro versus the dollar. So there's a head and shoulders top. Most people know what that is. And the downside target in the euro is 20% below where we are right now. Now, if the euro can go down 20%, what can happen to crypto? If the euro, if this is not the ruble, right? If the euro is not safe, what is? The Japanese yen. Okay, now this is extreme, but it has broken down hard. The Japanese are essentially printing yen to save their bond market. So think about it for a second. The third biggest country in the world has to print yen and trash the currency to save their bond market. Does that sound good to you? Confusing. Maybe you don't know what it means for crypto, but does it sound good to you? Now, flipping back a couple of charts, if the euro is going down and the yen is going down and the Chinese currency is next, what's everybody doing? They're flooding out of the euro, out of the yen into king dollar. That's what we call it legacy. When everyone wants king dollar, speculative assets get wasted. If the world doesn't want anything except the dollar, that's the end. Or that's the beginning of some sort of bigger move.
Okay, now, head and shoulders top in Bitcoin. So this formation's been around for a while. It really hasn't done much, okay? But, you know, when I look at how long it took to make the formation, about, you know, 150 days, this formation, if it's going to work, should complete itself by the middle of June. So does that lend credence to sell in May and go away? Bitcoin and crypto are a part of the foreign exchange market. So if no one wants the yen and no one wants the euro and no one wants the yuan and everyone wants the dollar, then it's possible that no one wants Bitcoin, no one wants Ethereum, and definitely no one wants altcoins of every kind because all anyone wants is the dollar and maybe Bitcoin. But if the dollar goes up, this is, I think, worse for crypto than if it was like a crypto stocks thing. Like I thought stocks were going to go down and lead crypto. Now I'm afraid of the reverse because the whole world is flooding into the, into the dollar. And the dollar is a crypto killer. Total three, this head and shoulders top thing, it's everywhere. Now I gave up on this. I stopped talking about it. The fact of the matter is near avalanche, like, you know, Bitcoin, and Ethereum were up yesterday. That stuff was down, right? These big altcoins last year, layer ones were under owned. This year, layer ones may be over owned, which means all these big coins that everyone has liked or talked themselves into based on a fundamental narrative could disappear. Just done. Like, I mean, this could go from 600 something billion to 400 something billion in market cap. Total three is altcoin market cap. Now, in case you don't believe me, the original head and shoulders formation was in Solana. Solana made the top, it made the head and shoulders. It was essentially a perfect formation. I thought it was over. It wasn't. And I noticed it never got to the target of 50. That was the target. Some of our work from our quant department would indicate that Solana can go down there. Now, I'm not necessarily picking on Solana. I am telling you to take these head and shoulders patterns seriously. As if things couldn't get much stranger, there is a head and shoulders pattern in the U.S. long bond. The U.S. long bond is like, it's a lot of things, but it's like a credibility measure for inflation fighting. So dollar up and bonds down, like this head and shoulders pattern is awful. Can you imagine like dollar up, bonds down, stocks down, interest rates up? Does that sound like a good market for speculative assets? Okay, this is the interest rate that comes from the 30-year bond. Think of it like the bond market's way of setting the 30-year mortgage rate. The long bond has entered what I call the crypto bear box. So the long bond is back to where it was in 2018 when crypto had its bear market. Yeah, okay, that may be a spurious relationship, but it's freaking me out because if interest rates continue to go up, if central banks have lost credibility, any increase in the dollar or interest rates in the United States can wreck speculative assets, stocks, ARC, Bitcoin, and alts. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's what it looks like. Now, compounding the problem is what's going on in the European bond market. EU10Y is a measure for what interest rates are over there. The Japanese have stopped their interest rates from rising by sacrificing the yen. I don't even know if the Europeans can do that. But what the market's going to do is test them. So rates were negative. They're now at point, they're, they're now at 0.94. They're headed for 1.08. And the higher they go, most likely, the more credibility they lose in Europe. Now, Stocks, which I used to think were the problem. Now I think they're not the problem, but they may be affected by the problem. 
on the DeMarc work over here, you could see, well, there was a nine bottom and then it went up and then, uh-oh, what happened? Failed rally. Especially after a nine, this means you could have 13 four-hour bars. You could have countdown. You could have much lower stock prices just because everyone looks at all that stuff I told you about and freaks out. Now, if you don't understand it, that's okay. No one understands it. That's what I think. I don't think a lot of people get this. They're starting to get it, but until the legacy media really writes about, hey, everyone's running into the dollar. That's the bottom line. And when everyone he runs into the dollar, something's wrong. Let's go to crypto. Now, what's happening in crypto? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. The only thing I noticed on the Bitcoin chart is the range keeps shrinking. So support still at 38,300. You know, resistance is still right around 40K, 39K, right? There's additional support at 36, but nothing is happening. Nothing's happening. The range though feels to me like it's getting smaller. Kind of like ApeCoin, right? Where ApeCoin went, you know, contract, 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 and the next breakout was huge. Now, what's our, what's our hope in Bitcoin? What's our hope? Our hope is that the world of fiat has blown itself up and everyone wants crypto. That's the crypto dream. However, that sounds a lot like we are all going to make it, which usually precedes a blow up. However, I will, I will not be mean and allow myself to cling to a little bit of we are all going to make it. Because I guess if Bitcoin holds 39K, Bitcoin doesn't go down. It may hold up the whole market. Alts may get smacked, but let's hope this is not as bad as it looks. Okay, ETH, the same thing, right? Um, support is all the way down at 2730. Uh, I put on my Twitter, kind of like the last word I'm going to say about this, headed into the weekend, right? It's either going to go down based on the GAN work or it's not. I don't like what happened in ETH last night. 29.20 was a big GAN point. I said hovering around that level was bad news. It hovered there last night. I went to bed. I woke up. It's down 3%. Okay. Support in Ethereum is probably at 2,700, as you've heard ad nauseum. Now, moving away from that into altcoins that have positive action, GMT connected to Stepin, which people continue to hate, in my opinion, right? People are fighting this move, right? Because of the valuation. So there was news this morning. They tried to gap it up. Maybe they can take it to 4.5. I don't know. Okay, but this is something where I think people are fighting it or they missed it. So either it's over because Ape and Steppen were like the last, you know, it was like the last gasp of, you know, crypto FOMO before this whole thing goes. All right. Or it's got a shot at going higher. Right. right now, the prior ceiling at 380 is acting as support. We'll see where it is when I'm done with the PowerPoint. But people are fighting this. Now, ApeCoin, which people want to FOMO into, something serious, I'm noticing a 13 top. You know, by all accounts, ApeCoin looks to be done. Right. So the trade was to buy it at 14 on this nine bottom. Ignore this nine top because it never really topped and it just kept right on going. So I'm more inclined to just say, all right, when it comes to ape and stepping, if buyers come in and they want this thing and they buy it down five or 6% and then the whole, the whole thing turns green again, you know, these two coins could hold up the market. You know what I'm saying? Like, Crypto is probably going to get hurt by the dollar, but if everyone's looking at ape and stepping, 
these two coins could hold up crypto and keep crypto in a range because this is where all the capital's going. But for the moment, I mean, this looks like a top. All right, now let's talk about Token Metrics' new feature. Okay, this top chart, we're looking at antimatter. The Token Metrics grade is in yellow. That's what the AI thinks of the coin. The white is the price. What we want to find and what I have analysts looking for is situations where the grade spikes, but price has not totally mooned yet. So we want the grade to spike and price to follow. Now, if you look down here at matter, that's the symbol, okay? The grade spiked right as price was just starting to spike. And this thing is like destroyed, right? There's another one that's moving, okay? I believe it's called SIF chain. It's got this symbol, okay? It's been going up a little bit every day. Now, is that a bear market rally or the start of something bigger? I don't know, okay? But we know we identified these two coins because we tracked how much the grade was moving. And now on the token metric site, which I will take you to, okay? You can see how these things are moving because folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, seriously. The only way to make money in crypto as of now is to find these small coins, jump on them for 48 hours or more, right? And then try to take your money or maybe go for a ride. So let's go to requests and the DeMarc work because I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you've got a, a burn because of this turn in stocks. I'm sorry, and in crypto. So, okay, so here's SPY, okay? Just starting the countdown phase. I can't believe it could look any worse. Let's just look at QQQ while we're here. Okay. So QQQ is like the same thing, right? 13 bottom, no one cares. Nine bottom, no one cares. Uptick and then just done. <laughs> you know, and again, I don't even think that this is the problem. All right, so let's go. Let's go to the Bitcoin and Ethereum short term charts. Okay, so obviously, as you can see here, nine bottom Bitcoin, okay, hovers near support, failed rally. Boom. Okay, we're all going to make it. I think the only reason this is not down more. It's because of all the things that go on around options expiration. Once that's over and crypto is left to its own devices over the weekend, it kind of runs a chill down my spine. Now, the good news is in Ethereum is that there is support at 28.20 and a nine bottom. All the different nine bottoms in this range have created a rally. Now, each rally has been slower and a bit smaller. So we're going to know by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, Saturday, whether or not ETH is going to make some green candles or whether this rally, there's going to be a counter trend rally that fails and then boom, that's it for ETH. We'll find out. All right. Now, somebody wants me to track Hex. Okay, let's see what's going on in Hex. Okay, so a, a very, very odd teacup and handle formation. Okay, and 
whatever is happening here, all right, it looks like they're trying to take out resistance. Let's go to the regression band, all right? So on a four hour chart, hex is, appears to be breaking out. And on an eight hour chart, hex appears to be breaking out. Now, before we get too crazy, okay, I know this is not the complete history of hex, but let's just do some fib work. Okay, so when you look at hex, okay, the 62% retracement is at 18 cents. So you'll know if something's going on here, if it can take out 18 cents. If not, you know, then that may be a signal to exit, but this does look like a constructive formation, okay? All right, so someone wants me to look at Decentraland. Let me, let me get down all the... Uh, Okay, GST I did, HEX I did, okay. So in keeping with Jim Cramer, there is always, there is a bull, there's always a bull market somewhere. I just get this feeling that, you know, if, if they're running into HEX, right, they're, they're running away from the rest of the market. They're running away. Okay. Flux on a 90 minute chart, you have persistent selling in front of a dollar 45. Now that said, that said, it looks like every time people sell, it comes back green. So one thing I have been doing lately is if, if the market is on the cusp of a bigger move, that I've actually been switching to like the daily chart time frame. So for anybody who's into V chain, okay, V chain is headed for support at 0.048. And we're praying that this 13 bottom holds. It is possible that there could be an overshoot of that level. Okay, that's a four hour chart. Now moving over here to flux, because I'm actually going to like four hour chart and daily charts. Cause like I said, this is going to be a big move. Uh, you're going to know. It. So in flux. Okay. So there, there isn't a reason to not like flux. Okay, other than the fact that every time it goes to 145, people sell, right? I mean, it's kind of all, it's pretty simple. So until bulls can take that out, yes, this is a nice rounding bottom, okay? But it only is a meaningful formation if you take out 146. Okay, polka dot. What is the lowest polka dot can go to if Bitcoin crashes. That's a good question. Okay, so I have on a polka dot weekly chart, 13, uh, no, I'm sorry. 1334. So 1334 is kind of the mother of all support points in polka dot and that has to hold okay somebody's saying sand loss support okay so that's sand weekly you know and hoff is right they're just you know support in sand is at 232. You know, the, the problem with this is, this is like the slow bleed that can lead to a give up trade. 
So this goes back. Now you're, you're going to probably sit there and think this is unbelievable. What does the dollar have to do with the metaverse? Well, if you have interest rates rising and you have the dollar going up, right? King dollar. King dollar, if everyone, if the dollar just goes up and sits there, this is just speculative assets can just get marked down. So this has nothing to do with whether or not Sandbox is any good or whether Polkadot's any good as a project. A lot of people say I'm in it for the tech or I'm in it for the future. That's, that's all true, okay? But Mr. Market doesn't care about that, right? If the dollar wrecks everything. So in Decentraland, right, we're in this like weird area now. This was Decentraland on the way up. This is the daily chart, right? So this low was 171. There's a nine bottom, a nine bottom here, which meant nothing. Another nine bottom here that doesn't appear to mean anything. So you may have like three more down days for this to puke itself out, which kind of makes sense, right? Like. I know this is going to sound stupid, but maybe the best case scenario is that crypto just does the whole puke in like three days. Whatever puke is going to happen, they just they just do it. And they kind of just get it out of the way. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario in something like Decentraland, okay, is that you start doing things like getting a retest of like, you know, where it originally, the original highs, right? The original highs in May is like $1.40, right? You don't want to be in Decentraland if this doesn't hold. But it, it's too late to get, it's too late to freak out. It's too early to freak out, right? You only freak out if it takes out the point. But man, if you're loaded up in these things, you got to ask yourself, right? Okay, is Matic going to dust? I got a lot of people asking me about Matic. I think the problem that's happening in the marketplace is unfortunately, when I'm talking about reducing risk, like I can't remember where I started. I'm pretty sure in April, you know, and particularly mid-April was when I was like, be careful of the failed rally. Like this was the failed rally in Matic. That was the end, right? Here's don't feed the bear, okay? And then boom. So my guess is you got between one and three down days because this is going to count down to a 13 bottom, right? And remember, 13 bottoms don't necessarily guarantee a bottom, there is support in Matic at $1.15, all right? And then if the 13 bottom shows up in a couple of days, that will also provide you with an additional support point. But this, this looks like capitulation, right? And now, if you're a Matic bull, it's great because at some point, there will be a layer two season, right? Like the DeFi bear market will end and layer twos, will become prominent because I'm done holding my breath for ETH 2.0. Can I check chocolate chip cookie futures? They are no doubt rallying the way risk assets are trading. Can Rune, I'm sorry, can Near hold? You know what the warning signal for this whole tape was? Was Near. Near was telling you that, you know, oh my God, something is wrong if the best coin fundamentally is just getting destroyed. So the good news in near is today is a nine bottom. So there's hope like this nine bottom that maybe the underperformance of near is over, right? I mean, this has just gone straight down. I mean, this is a daily chart. I mean, there's been one green candle so there may be a bounce in near. Now, if that bounce does not bring near back above a key point at 1253, then this whole market is done. 
It's as simple as that, right? In other words, if there is no rally in near, or if there is a rally in near that fails at 1245, Dunsky. Done. Okay, GMT looks like something I'm going to be doing throughout the stream. Okay, I did it with the regression bands the first time. Okay, I probably got to go to a four hour chart. All right. So here's the four hour chart, right? Um, you know, like everything else, beware the failed rally, right? It shoots up, it comes back down. That's a five wave top. They tried to retest today on fundamental news. It doesn't work. And now they're selling it again. Listen, I know people who are like, I know guys who are like running five miles a day. <laughs> like they don't even like running, but they're getting paid so much money. They're getting paid like $1,000 a day to run. Now these people invested a lot of money into sneakers, but you know, at some point people are going to unload this token. Are, are they going to unload it now? I don't know. Part of me feels like Stepin and ApeCoin were like the last vestiges of speculative excess right before it goes. But I don't want to hate on this because you know why? I think too many people are hating on it. Everyone's talking about wanting to FOMO into ApeCoin. I don't he I mean, I don't hear a lot of people wanting to FOMO into Stepin sneakers. So we were on this like way early couple people 100x their money. You just have to be careful about FOMO when you have these type of environments. Okay, now here, here comes, here comes like rapid fire. Okay, my friends who are into KDA are here. Welcome. By the way, we want to welcome everybody who shows up for the request portion of the stream. I know the market is blowing up, but please hit the like button. Cause you know what, you know, who told you with the red t-shirt, the red hat, the five stages of the bear market. So bring your friends, please. All right. Now KDA, unfortunately give up trade in motion, probably 393, right? I think you can assume that if your coin is down, no matter how much you like it, a give up trade is happening. It's going to test this point at 435 and they're going to test it, right? They're going to test this whole market. They're going to see if King dollar is either a three day blowout or a three month blowout. Let's hope it's a three day blowout or let's hope it doesn't happen at all, but it does look like they want to test like stops or your patience. Okay, AVAX looks tired of falling. I, I, I can't disagree with that. It's kind of shocking. The underperformance of Near and Avalanche are, sh are shocking. Shocking, right? Okay, so in Avalanche, you know, you have a pair of 13 bottoms on the four hour chart that produced no rally, no rally. So we've been listening to DeMarc work, right? Remember what I said about DeMarc work, right? In a confined space, it's amazing, right? It can give you bottoms of a trend, but when the signals don't work, that's a bigger signal than when the signals do work. So avalanche, for example, nine bottom. Okay. Counter trend rally took a while hits this moving average band. Boom. Right. You got a nine bottom forming. There may be a counter trend rally in avalanche. There may be, but it's also counting down. So you could have like two more down days. Now, when you do, You'll have a 13 and a nine, most likely. 
Okay, but that's two days away. So based on the fact that this thing is down already, okay, it, it's down already. And then when options expire, it's not clear what happens after that. But you are right, you know, a give up trade is in process and you're two to three days away from seeing if there's a bottom. Okay, so it may just be one of these things where everyone just freaks out on Sunday night again. You have like the Sunday night freak out. Okay, chain link, most of this looks the same, right? Nine bottom, chain link looks a little worse because they tried to uptick it. So I'm guessing you got two or three more days of this in chain link. Okay, the good news is there's support in chain link at 1169. Okay, a 13 bottom on the four hour chart. And this looks like the final capitulation. Okay, MPL, haven't looked at this in a while. Okay, so this could be a data error. You know, it looks like support is holding. Let's look at it over here. Okay, give me a minute here. Okay, bad data, sorry. Okay, so this was the token metrics favorite for a long time. It came out of the indices, right? It bounced from 46 and it's trying to get back to 52. So, you know, again, uh, it's positive for the day. So I guess that's positive when nothing else is positive. Let's look at the daily chart. You know, I think when it comes to stuff like this, you know, when it comes down to support, like this is the give up trade for Maple when people just go, oh no, it didn't make a new high. So it's a small give up trade and if the whole market doesn't crater, I, I'm hoping support holds. Okay, Cosmos over here. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna switch back to like the 90 minute chart. Okay, there's Flux trying to be green. Okay, Cosmos. Yes, out there, people encouraging all y'all to smash the like button. Okay, so I've got concerns about Cosmos for multiple reasons. I would have thought there would be a lot more support here. There's support at 1932. This is a 90 minute chart. So again, I'm guessing they're gonna puke this down either today or Sunday night. Sometimes what crypto can do is like, there'll be an event in legacy and legacy will be slow to understand it, but crypto doesn't have the luxury of being slow. So this is why you could get this like kind of puke in things like cosmos, right? Like I'm, I'm not saying everything's going to puke, but you know, there's at least, at least three to four hours of downside, there could be three to four days of downside. And remember, sell in May and go away is upon us. Okay.
Okay, Celsius. Okay, so virtually every 90 minute chart looks the same. Whoop. Okay, this one doesn't. So with Celsius, 215 seems to be what matters most. Every time it goes up there, they're selling it, right? You know, the, the level they were selling it at was 235, and now they're all selling it at 215 here. So whatever, they, whatever this is, every time it goes green, they unload on it. Okay, XDC. Okay, well, this certainly is a different looking picture. Okay, so this is a nine top, hits support and starts moving higher. So whatever this is, people definitely want it. Let's take a look at it on token metrics. Okay, interesting price is moving, but the grade hasn't moved yet. So I'm almost wondering what happens when our token metrics grade spikes up. Interesting. So whatever this is, it's like coming out of nowhere. Let's go back over here to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. I'm looking at the right thing. So yeah, the DeMarc work looks good and the AI may start picking up on this soon, but it hasn't picked it up yet. So if this thing takes out resistance, you know, the way I would read this is, you know, there is resistance, you know, right where it peaked in early February. So you don't, you don't necessarily want to get crazy, but whatever this is, it's obviously defying the rest of the market. So that part is really good. Okay. Solana or AVAX as a buy for a bear market, 50, 50 allocation or 60, 40. Okay. Well, my answer as to whether or not you would want to own Solana in a bear market or avalanche you know, when you look at Solana, right, you got a 13 bottom yesterday, or I'm sorry, four hours ago, and it's waterfalling, right? We have support points in Solana as low as 50. So I would say none of the above, right? Uh, if you want to build it during the bear market, you can start dollar cost averaging if there's a panic trade below this support point at 90. That's what I would do. I would wait for everyone to panic, which has not happened yet. Wait for everyone to panic. And then you can start your dollar cost averaging from there. So if it's a terrible three months, you know, you may wind up buying Solana all the way down to 50. If you've got the stomach for that. Somebody else said answer is no. Okay. FTM, where is the floor? Good question. I had people asking me about this today. So pain in these layer ones is picking up. So painful, right? You know, I was like, oh, it, it's going to be okay at 92 cents. And then it can't get above it. And then it just waterfalls down. Like I got support at 83 cents. And the Phantom doesn't hold support at 83 cents particularly since you should have a nine bottom coming up soon. I just got to think that that's what's going to happen, right? All these things look like they're going to have one big final puke, right? J-Man says alt season coming. Okay, well, um, right now it looks like altcoin selling season, but let's, let me answer the question scientifically. Let's look at Bitcoin dominance. 
Okay. In order to have alt season, you need to have Bitcoin dominance going down. So this is like the recent history in Bitcoin dominance. To me, this feels like a downward sloping wedge. Let's go to a, like a weekly chart, see if it still shows up that way. So Bitcoin dominance has gone down to such a degree that I can't even really get it on the chart. Okay. So if we're in an era, so Bitcoin dominance was at 70, 70 at the start of last year. And right now, this to me looks like a downward sloping wedge, okay? Prices have made new lows. Bitcoin dominance made new lows, while the RSI on the weekly chart has made higher lows. This to me feels like Bitcoin dominance is going to like 47, and it could go a lot higher. So that doesn't necessarily feel like alt season to me. It feels more like Bitcoin season. Hopefully I'm absolutely dead wrong about that. Okay. Okay. Just long Cody for a trade. Okay, so it's a DeMarc nine bottom. There's support at 20 cents, right? So if you want to get long, that's okay, right? You're expecting some kind of bounce. Uh, if you get it, it could be a healthy bounce. If you don't get it, then you stop out. Okay, BVF. Okay, rather robust give up trade, 13 bottom. Okay, so epic give up trade, you have the 13, you have the nine bottom. Support is at $4.16. So if this is not the end, then $4.16, there should be some sort of bounce off that. If there's no bounce, then it is possibly the end. Okay, Matic we did, we're looking for $1.15 to hold. Okay, yes, I, I was referring to a possible alt apocalypse, unfortunately. Okay, someone's asking if I caught the soul puke. For whatever reason, I can't get soul on DeMarc. Okay, going to an eight hour chart here. Okay, it, it just, all, all of these things are trading in such a clear downtrend that it just feels like to me that, you know, even though they, they wicked it down last night, all these things in some form or another are testing whether or not people can hold on, right? Like this is Coinbase's stock, right? It's so depressing. I'm tired of talking about it. Like, let's go to an 89 minute chart. Okay, right here. What do we have? Don't feed the bear. We're all going to be all right failed rally, boom, right? I mean, this is like, this looks like it wants to go to 103. 
Like every, every day I have one of our guys go, can you believe what is going on with Coinbase? I mean, what, what survives a King dollar event, which really I hope never comes. So somebody was asking if that was bullish divergence on Bitcoin dominance monthly it was actually Bitcoin dominance weekly. Yes, I do believe there is bullish divergence going on in Bitcoin dominance. Which means Bitcoin could survive, but I'm not sure about the rest of it. I'm not. I mean, Bitcoin may hold the 39K, but what's going to happen to the rest of the market? No, I, don't, I don't think the whole market can go down and have Bitcoin just hold by itself, but I don't think there's much of a case to hate Bitcoin other than the fact that the dollar, no one can stop the dollar. Okay, Jewel on an eight hour chart. Right, I mean, if this, if these formations, if these regression bands work, Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's almost getting hard to draw stuff. So what they're doing is they took out these lows and they're just going to test everybody. They, they're going to test to see how much pain you can take. I know that doesn't sound very fun, but that's what they're doing. And they may do that. They may do that with gusto once options expiration is over. Because options expiration and month end and things like that. Can actually hold up a market because of all the buying and selling that's related to options contracts expiring. It's a very, very strange world to see how price moves around. Normally when I, when I worked at Goldman on options expiration, uh, I took the day off because the price moves had nothing to do with charts. Okay. Um, you know, this is very much in line with what we talked about, right? A possible nine bottom in two days, a possible 13 bottom say tomorrow. So they're going to test you and you can hold on one more day. So here's the formula for a lot of this stuff, right? You can, you can hold on and see if things hold. So this is the four hour chart, right? So, you know, like they said, they're just washing everybody out. And I don't know when they're done. They're either done here, they're done at 75, they're done tomorrow. You know, if you haven't reduced risk, then you're going to have to sit through the washout and hope the washout isn't a crash. That's all. Because if the washout's a crash, then, you know, you get wrecked, right? I mean, right now, let's just, I'm, I'm trying to keep track of where ETH is while we're talking. ETH's not really falling apart, but it's early yet. It's early. Hey, is this live? It absolutely is. Okay. Lucas wants to know, what are you expecting after August until 2023? Good question. So I expect, I think everything has to sort of what I call right size, right? Stocks are too expensive. Real estate is unaffordable, right? The common person is getting destroyed by inflation, right? Free markets have to sort of adjust for all this pain, right? In other words, the only way the common person survives is if capital markets make a huge adjustment. Well, how do they do that? Well, stocks, real estate prices, and speculative assets have to get marked down. Now, will crypto be the first asset to come back in, say, August? Yes. 
assuming crypto gets dragged down with the rest of it. Crypto may be in a range. So when legacy is done doing whatever it needs to do, because it needs to do it and it's already doing it, if you go back to the start, watching the euro and the yen collapse, crypto will lead, will lead out of the gate in August. And I think again in October, crypto will lead. The question is what happens to speculative assets, right? This is audience on a four hour chart, right? We talked about failed rallies and now we're just waiting to see where it stops. You know, a lot of times audience, when they puke it out, you know, they puke it out like to 97 cents or below a dollar. I mean, look at the amount of trading on this 90 minute chart that's occurred above a dollar. And they're on the verge of either coming to support and holding like they did here, or they're doing this like slow grind through. So what happens at Audius determines what happens next. Now, someone's asking, is BTC going to go to 80K before close at 37? All right. So let's go to BTC. I think the only way that's going to happen, right, is if somehow Bitcoin becomes like some sort of mega safe haven. Right. I see support in Bitcoin at 32K and at 28. So if there's a big down move, that's where Bitcoin could go. Right. 80K, I think, is something that you see after all these risk assets are done. So after everyone is tired of the euro, everyone is tired of the yen. Right. Everybody is disgruntled about stocks. Right. That's the dawn of crypto. Okay. Now, unfortunately, before the dawn of anything like the internet, for example, what do you have? A crash, right? The internet, the meta, it's just like the metaverse, right? All the way up, price in everything that could ever possibly go right, and then erase it all. Meanwhile, the people who are working on the projects, they're building, they're building, they're building. And then eventually you wake up two years later and it's off to the races. Nobody wanted to touch the Google IPO in 2004. No one, not Warren Buffett. I just was like, oh my God, don't even show this to me. That's how bad the carnage was. Could that happen again? Yes. Could the dawn of crypto, could everything everyone has always believed about crypto come true after everyone gives up. All right, so if you do want some good news, this is Ethereum Weekly showing support at 2,800. So the best case scenario for ETH is that basically 3,900, 39,000 in Bitcoin and 2,800 in ETH act as support, okay? In other words, that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario, as you've heard about it already, okay? Somebody's asking about gold and silver. Probably some pain going on there with this thing with the dollar, right? I know there's a lot of guys in gold that probably can't believe what's going on. They're like, how, how can this not be rallying? Okay, so there is a giant teacup and handle in gold. This is the monthly chart, which is interesting because today is close to the end of the month. Okay. The monthly candle is not exciting. It's not terrible, but it's not exciting, right? Handles are really difficult to trade and gold is probably going to require some form of a break in the dollar trade. Right? Like gold mining stocks are oversold, right? They're at the bottom of their regression band, right? This is junior gold mining stocks, but they're still under pressure, right? There's, you know, it's 
like people are selling every uptick. Now, I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but again, you know, interest rates continue to go up, right? Like this is the two, you're like, Bill, is that an altcoin? No. Okay. It's the daily chart of the two year interest rate. Right, the yield on the two, you know. It's US O2Y daily. Okay, I mean, it just goes up. I mean, the yield is up today, even when stocks are being scary. Normally, the yield on the two, you know, goes down when stocks scare people. Now the, the interest rate market is just like, oh, well, eh, so what? Stocks are down. Let's take it up anyway. A scary, right? In other words, ZB1, long bond futures, okay? So long bonds down. Stocks down. Bonds and stocks down on the same day. Good luck finding a lot of days like that. Like when King Dollar starts, you got to be careful. That's all I can tell you. Any prediction for housing? Good question. So conveniently, I have the home builder chart here. So let's look at the monthly chart for home builders and see what we got. So this is XHB, okay, the home builder ETF, right? And this is monthly. Okay, and I bet if I pulled up the alligator, right? This whole uptrend is turning. It's turning, right? And XHB is currently at 63, and the downside support is 46. So if you look back on a monthly chart, this was March of 2020. So this was the pandemic freakout to which the Fed's response was to print money and buy mortgage-backed bonds to help create all of this FOMO in housing. So it's safe to say that with the inflation numbers, which by the way, come out, I believe, May 10th. So as of Monday morning, we will be something like two weeks away from another inflation print. So to me, XHB is done, and it's telling you that loudly, right? Because all of this FOMO that occurred late last year when housing was going up forever, you know how the equity market is, right? They never met any FOMO that they didn't like. I guess crypto is like that too, but everybody knew interest rates were going up. And then this thing went from 86 to 53. Now, speaking of, of, of carnage, let's just look at ARC monthly. Just in case you're wondering how bad all of this could get, this is the altcoins of the stock market. This is not altcoins. This is stocks, right? These were growth stocks from an investor named Kathy Wood, who, you know, they make fun of her a lot at Wall Street, but she had a vision. She's like, you know what? Let's invest in stocks that are kind of like altcoins, right? They don't have earnings but they have a lot of promise for the future. And ARC went from 40 to 160, and it's now at 48. And where's the trend line? Trend line is at 40. So I guess the good news is ARC is almost done. The bad news is, what happens if this happens to S and P? This S and P monthly, outstanding looking monthly candlestick, huh? Not 
Okay, huge rejection off a GAN point. This was this was Trump's election, right? So ARC unwound everything it did from the start of the pandemic. Like what happens if the whole money printing trade unwinds itself? I mean, I know no one wants to hear that, but somebody is asking, is that when the crypto rally started? So yes. So this is Bitcoin monthly. Right. So again, this huge panic that they had in, in, in Bitcoin, where it went all the way down to 4,000, isn't even discernible. So that's where Bitcoin started. And that's where ARK started. This is COVID, March 2020. Can someone please explain to me how you could have the altcoins of the stock market get killed and the altcoins of the altcoin market still be okay? I don't know, man. Like it's scary to think about it. Let's just hope, let's just hope it's a two-day trade. Just hope it's a two-day trade, right? Hey, when we mentioned Stepin, was it first in a webinar? Yes, I, I believe Stepin was explained to our customer base via the premium chat group and through the professional webinar that we have every Wednesday, okay? Looks like Hex is moving. Okay, so Hex is breaking out. Okay, like anything else. It, it seems like people want to chase hex. People want to chase what's going up more than they want to manage risk. Now, I understand that. I know people need to make money. I get that. But people listen. Chasing what's up that day, it did work in ApeCoin. It did. Okay, I'm trying to find to see if there's any resistance in Hex. Okay, so Hex is blowing through anything that looks like resistance. Okay, so I think you want to watch out in Hex for, I, I think we were talking about 18 cents before, I have 0.176. So that looks like where HEX is headed. This is the HEX four hour chart, because I know people are, are, you know, people are into what's moving. So this is moving. Okay, APE is dropping. Okay, again, not, not a surprise. Right. It, it has paid. It has paid to take the money. It has paid to take the money. So GMT is coming off. Let's see what's going on with Ape. Since we did talk about price prediction in this for the video. Hey, I know some big YouTubers who were into this. They took their money around 23. So undoubtedly there's some retail FOMO going on here because, you know, the support point that matters in eight, okay, is 2155. That's probably your pivot, okay? Okay, somebody giving me and Token Metrics some love. We appreciate that. There's a lot to Token Metrics. There's the site. There's the premium group. Think of it kind of like as the live stream, except, you know, we're effectively talking all day. And then they're coming out with like an NFT grade to go along with that new feature that I showed you where you can try and track these small altcoins. 
So Constellation still in an uptrend. I would say if there's a problem, if there's a blowout, 0.168 is where you want to see it hold. Okay, so this is Constellation, four hour chart. Okay. Okay, Ape Land Sale is this weekend. Got it. I heard about that. Okay, Rep. Doing a four hour chart here. By the way, folks, appreciate the love out there, particularly from our customers. Let me give my love right back to you. We appreciate your business for sure. And I appreciate everybody who comes in here every day and hits the like button. Believe me, I check it on my phone at least three or four times a day. Okay, rep 2480, I'm sorry, 1281. Let's, for the heck of it, let's, uh, let's take a look at it on token metrics. Okay, so nothing going on with the grade, nothing going on with the price. Okay, the grade's low, go into trading view. Okay, now again, you know, it's like fail, 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 fail. Each rally got smaller with this, which is why I'm worried that, you know, every time these altcoins, right, like member ARC, you know, they're going to test everybody. They're going to test everybody. Okay, let's do TVK on token metrics. And then I want to do I want to do something else on token metrics too. I want to go to the ratings page. Okay, like I said, you got to be careful of the give up trade here. It's been down at this price level at 9 cents 3 times. Okay, you, you just got to be careful that this is not people just packing it in, right? There was a nice reversal here. It went green and now people are like, oh God, right? The give up trade. Okay, so back to uh, the ratings page. So what's up at the top? Well, mirrored Apple. So it likes Apple better than anything else. Now, mirrored Bitcoin is also there. That's interesting. But that could feed into our Bitcoin dominance theory. Okay. Kyber continues to hold up, although it's getting slammed today. Right. Now, one, one thing that caught my eye, I don't know if it can hold up because it's rallied like everything else. But I noticed that the token metrics grade for Kava was pretty high right? Price is grinding higher, right? So the grades are high. We don't know if they're going to stay high. Okay. But, you know, like I said, you got to be careful to analyze both the grade, the price and the trading view, because it's up here at resistance. So even though it's got some cool token metric signals, it, it, in my mind, it would violate the no FOMO policy. Okay. Now come, come Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Okay. You're going to want to look at, particularly if the market continues to go down. Okay. Particularly if the market continues to go down, you're going to want to look at the all exchange index. Okay, what's the all exchange index? Our AI looks at all the coins, all of them, and says, all right, from all the coins and all the exchanges, okay, these are the ones that we like the best. And I'm not getting any love. Okay, there we go. So for today, right, well, that's Q coin. So each exchange has its own index. All right, so today, Apple was 30%. ApeCoin was 25%. It will be interesting to see if ApeCoin survives the downtrade. 
and whether it remains in our index. The AI caught it. It started at like 19 and it caught it up to 26. Okay. Now, why do you, why do you care about this? Well, because if the market goes down more than two days in a row, a lot of times this thing will go to all cash. You see this thing in stable coins and gold, that's your warning sign. So I'm not going to be on the air again until, you know, Monday at noon. Hopefully it's an uneventful, boring weekend. However, this close doesn't feel very boring, right? Like this weekly close, I mean, we're not done yet, obviously. There's more time to go this week, okay? But you know, remember how in ETH, I'm sorry, let's go back to the eight hour chart in ETH. Okay, remember how I was talking about, you know, wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two. What does that lead to? This. It leads to a big old three wave. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Okay, so here's my concluding note. For today, I would tell you that you've got to do something that you haven't wanted to do thus far. Like nobody wanted to adjust risk when it was going up. Nobody. Because in crypto, I understand you want to catch the rally. Okay. But you may have to adjust risk when it's down because it may go lower. Now let's hope that's not the case. But right now, as far as I'm concerned, the narrative that people may start picking up on is that everyone's flooding into the dollar because worldwide there's a problem with bonds and a problem with stocks. If I had to do the market update in an elevator, I'd be like, you know, there's a problem with bonds and there's a problem with stocks. And for whatever reason, everyone's buying the dollar. And you'd be like, gee, that's interesting. If there's a problem with stocks and there's a problem with bonds and everyone wants the dollar, what happens to crypto? I, I don't know. But based on the way this thing is trading, I mean, Avalanche is down 5%. Near is down 7%. Ref Finance, which we wanted to look at at 241, is now at 207, down 20%. Right? This is an environment where speculative assets can vanish. So if you have speculative assets, you may have to do the unthinkable. You may have to adjust risk when it's down to avoid getting completely wrecked. Remember, the anatomy of a bear market. Beware of failed rallies, right? Don't feed the bear. Don't buy at the top of enormous bear market reversal rallies. Fear of being short. So when the market goes down, after everyone feeds the bear, everyone goes, oh my God, I can't short it. Then it bounces and everybody goes, ah, we're all going to make it. And then you have what you have today. A big bath of red ink compete with, complete with the red Oakley hat. Friends, hit the like button. Don't get wrecked. Hear my voice in your head when you have to look at your positions. I will be back here on Monday. Token Metrics customers, Make sure you use that premium chat. I will keep my eye on it. All right. So I will see you Monday. Okay. Pat is asking, is it possible for Bitcoin to go below 30K? Yes. Okay. Uh, in Australia, we have to wake up at 4 a.m. to watch live. Okay. Well, that, that is a bummer. Uh, perhaps we could put in a stream at some point for the Asian market. Okay. Um, should we buy the dip or wait until see what happens on Saturday or Sunday? Folks, there's a lot of people asking me, when should I buy the dip? And everyone says, when should I buy 
My answer is sell. The answer to the question is I would wait for Saturday and Sunday, right? In other words, whatever it is they're doing here, whether it's three days or three months, if it's just three days, you want to take a shot, that's cool. Maybe they just get it all out of their system all at once. That's preferable, okay? So maybe, maybe this dollar thing will just work itself out in three days, okay? But they said inflation was transitory or temporary. Has inflation been temporary? All right, folks, we got to go. I got to go. I will be here on Monday. This is Bill Noble signing off. We'll see you then. Thank you.